Welcome back to Booze and the Rocks. My name is David Edwards. And today we are going to use these to make the banana daiquiri. But first, this. Now let's talk about the daiquiri. In 1898, Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders, plus another 6,000 US troops, landed at Playa Daiquiri. Of course, that worked out to Daiquiri Beach. Now, they did this to kickstart the Spanish-American War to help Cuba win its independence from Spain. Yay, independence. Now, that same year, Jennings Cox, who is an American engineer and was overseeing the U.S. iron mining interest there, shook together some Cuban rum, lime, sugar, and ice. And of course, he came up with the daiquiri. Now, he named this after the nearest town and invented a cocktail that endures over 120 years later. But the banana daiquiri, of course, what we're here to see, was created by Charles H. Baker. And he was the author of The Gentleman's Companion, which was published in 1939. So let's get into making a proper banana daiquiri. And of course, I'm going to do the blended method, so we're going to get that nice, smooth, cold, tropical feel. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use my shaking glass, just so that you can see what I'm doing. Now the next technique that we're going to do, it's not really a technique, this is called rum splitting. Some bars will, instead of using a standard two ounces or 60 mils of a light rum, they'll split it between a light rum and an overproof rum. So we're gonna use some Appleton Estates uh, light rum here. This is their signature blend. And we're going to use one and three quarter ounces or which is 45 mils. But, the overproof rum that we're going to use today is Ray and Nephew's overproof rum. This is 63%. This is a, a nice, strong, very funky uh, banana. It's got this weird little uh, thing on there. I learned, it's interesting, that the reason they have this cap is to stop people from actually siphoning some out and replacing it with water. and just a little too much. Oh, on its own, wow. Okay, so of course the next thing we need is some creme de banana, or creme de banana, however you want to pronounce it. We need one ounce of this electric yellow uh, McGinnis brand uh, creme de banana. And this will be sweet. And look at that, it's already changing our colors there. Of course, the next thing we need, of course, is some lime juice. And we need half an ounce. Which is just enough to kind of cut it out a little bit. And of course, what is a banana daiquiri without banana? So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the banana and we're going to use the first piece that we cut to create the garnish. And rather than just cutting it straight through the center, we're going to cut it on an angle. And doing that, you want to have about, about a finger's width so you get a really nice solid piece. Now what we're going to do is just give it a quick, a quick cut because we don't need the, the skin of the banana. throw this in and you know what we're gonna use the whole banana because you don't want to waste your banana right or maybe you do it's up to you and it looks absolutely uh, so appealing at this moment and the last thing we need of course is four to six ounces of ice now the best thing to do is to use a blended or broken down ice. You can use a, a blender on pulse mode to give you approximately what you need. And I'm just gonna throw this into my little ninja cup here. Well, and I have a sneaky suspicion that's not in the ice, but we'll see. And I like my drink strong, so let's see how this turns out. Look at that, nice and smooth and silky smooth. And I'm going to put this in a hurricane glass rather than a, a traditional daiquiri glass. Oops. 
and we're going to use the uh, our little banana slice and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small cut in there to give us that garnish. How does that look? Absolutely tropical. Oh, it smells so good. You can just smell the, the banana. And you know what? I'm terrible at my garnishes. My garnishes are so bad it fell in. And I have a sneaky suspicion my straw is not going to be good enough. So bear with me. That is so good. It's just sweet enough. It's a little bit cool. It's nicely balanced. And you don't get too much sweetness from the cream to banana. The banana cuts it nicely and you get good balance with this. And you don't get one part of the rum working better than the other. Now I didn't have Cuban rum unfortunately, and I wish I did at this time. But please, in the comments down below, describe what kind of Cuban rum you think that I should use. And what I'll do is I'll also, in the description, I will put the method and the ingredients on how I made this specific uh, cock, this specific version of the banana daiquiri. But if this is your first time to our channel, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification. That way, every time you, every time we place a new video, you get notified. But if you don't like bananas and you don't like rum, Hit the thumbs down button twice, and we'll see you next time. Now, they did this to kickstart the Spanish-American War to help Cuba win its independence from Spain. Yes, independence. Now, that same year, Jennings Cock and came up with the daiquiri. Now, he named the concoction after the nearest town, and he invented a cocktail that endures for nearly 120 years. That's not good. So why does it say no sim, no card? Of course, we need some lime juice. And we're gonna squeeze that right here. Fucked up. And we're gonna squeeze that. I can't fix that. Yes. Well, I guess I better enjoy some rum tonight. And we'll use a blender. And some lemon or lime juice, whichever one. Damn it. Ah. Right. Don't drink that. Why? I just took a big sip of that. Oh, I feel it in my bones. 